So when we talk about why do we do IVF, um, the reasons or the indications have changed significantly as the technology behind it has improved. For example, it used to be that surgically irreversible tubal disease and the fallopian tubes serve simply to transport the embryo were one of the indications. Um, now, it used to be, therefore, that it was felt that tubal disease should be initially surgically approached to try to reverse tubal disease. And we found that in some times that could be successful. The majority of tubal disease uh, that's caused by different types of inflammatory reactions, infections, pelvic infections, previous surgery, endometriosis, may not be very well reversed surgically. In other words, the patient can undergo at least one surgery and have at most perhaps a 50% improvement in their chances to conceive above and beyond the issues of fertilization and embryo development. So keeping in mind that the fallopian tubes are actually just transportation systems. It doesn't change what's going on with egg and embryo development. So we used to do a lot of tubal surgery and as a tubal surgeon it was, it was sometimes very rewarding and very interesting but it was a tedious surgery. It was sometimes major surgical procedures that took quite a while and frequently did not either work well or perhaps work poorly. There is a high incidence of ectopic or tubal pregnancy after tubal surgeries and this is not something that is desirable. Uh, the most rewarding types of tubal surgeries would be when there was no pre-existing pathology or problem with the fallopian tubes. We found that to be the case in people who had had tubal ligations and then, for whatever reason, changed their minds. And so it's possible technically to reverse the tubal ligation, again, with a surgical procedure. It's called a reanastomosis. This works well if the area of the fallopian tube that was damaged by the ligation is relatively small and in the mid portion of the tube. If it is toward the proximal or the beginning portion of the tube or toward the end of the tube, it doesn't work well at all. And that's something that prior to undergoing such a procedure, we like to try to evaluate. The reasons for this are that there is a significant difference in the appearance, function, and actual size of the beginning of the fallopian tube where it implants into the uterus and the end of the fallopian tube, which is where the egg is harvested from the ovary. So if that difference is too significant because a lot of the mid portion of the tube has been destroyed by the actual tubal ligation and obviously people who do the tubal ligation do so with the idea that it's a permanent procedure. So a lot of them are done in ways in which a lot of the tissue has been destroyed by cauterization, suturing, things of that nature. So not all tubal ligations can or should be reversed. So for example, if we have a lady who's 41, 42, with a diminished ovarian reserve, uh, regardless of the status of her fallopian tubes, we don't feel she's necessarily a good candidate for major tubal surgery because she has another issue with age and the quality of the egg she's producing. So she would be far better served by in vitro fertilization. On the other hand, if the patient is 31 and has a high ovarian reserve and has not had significant tubal damage by the way in which the tubes were closed, then she may be a good uh, candidate for a tubal 
reversal procedure. So we like to truly individualize patient care based upon what's best for the individual. And this can be different, so it's not really possible to say uh, in a general f way that people who have had tubal ligations can always have them reversed because that's not true, nor should they necessarily want to have them reversed. So again, this is a changing process and used to be 20 years ago when IVF didn't work very well that everybody who had had a tubal ligation would have surgeries. We would do a lot of these. Now they're actually become uh, more rare and, and almost unusual to do because we don't in our patient population see a lot of younger patients who have done tubal ligations at an early age. So it, it's a function as well of the patient population that we see. The average age of the patient who walks into our office is almost 39 now. And, and as such, there are far more indications for things like in vitro fertilization than there are for surgical procedures. So even though many of us very much miss doing surgical procedures because they're not actually indicated as often now as they used to be. And this is primarily because the laboratory environment or the in vitro process is so effective uh, for both diagnosing and also treating fertility problems that the indications for tubal surgery have become more and more marginalized and less common. So we live in a very rapidly changing world in regard to our abilities to treat fertility problems.